Hi, friends. For some context, everyone, Magic Links reached out to say, "Hey, we won't be able to pay you for a sponsored video speaking about the Sephora sale, but we can offer you a gift card to buy you some stuff." <laughs> And believe it or not, I had a few items on my wish list, products that I was thinking about buying during the sale. And many of you had asked me like about the Charlotte Tilbury face palette and Empower from Huda Beauty. So I thought this was a fantastic opportunity. Thank you Magic Links for sending the gift card and I was able to buy a few items. I didn't go crazy. I just bought the makeup items that were again on my radar that I had the most interest in. And yes, I will film a separate Sephora holiday event recommendations video this is more highlighting the products that again i had on my wish list and i will mention these products again during the recommendations video but i just wanted to spend some time with these products because i didn't have a video on them to share the swatches some looks and all that fun stuff. Product number one is the NARS Rising Star Cheek Palette. I decided to get the NARS palette over the Charlotte Tilbury face palettes. I originally had both of them in my basket, but it appeared that the response wasn't that great. It was average, and I didn't want to buy a product that I would be eh about based on people's feedback. I thought this was a better choice, and I actually had my eye on this for quite some time. I had it in my basket for a while, and when again, I had the opportunity to buy it with Magic Link support. I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna get it. I have the swatches here. We have Guilty Pleasure, which is a rose gold, Famous, a bright pink, Golden Age, a cool fuchsia, Limelight, a pink mauve, Paramount, Peachy Coral, and Premier, a Bordeaux Red. I started with Guilty Pleasure on my cheekbones using my Tonsedo Angled Brush, and this is a jelly type texture, baked texture that I would use a slightly stiffer brush with, maybe a synthetic one. You could experiment between synthetic fibers and natural bristles to get enough pickup for the application, but because this is, again, a baked formula, it's gonna leave behind a beautifully glassy finish on the skin. It won't appear as obvious as maybe a traditional powder highlighter would so if you prefer that more light texture soft focus effect then you will probably like the texture of guilty pleasure and with famous using the same brush i lodged this into the hollows of my cheekbones so i brought it up a little higher because it did have that more vibrant pink hue to it really nice to have a color that not only provides that vibrancy but can also add dimension and structure as well and then i took golden age the cool fuchsia color on my cheeks but in a sweeping fashion which is what I've adopted for the last few weeks where I'm a lot more liberal with my cheek application instead of keeping the color exclusively here the apples of my cheeks I take it closer to my nose and I really love the effect the color wraps my face it envelops my cheeks and definitely delivers more of that natural flushed effect which I like to achieve with these shades and on the other side I went in with premiere on again the higher parts of my cheek because of the richer color and having a color like Bordeaux Red in this gel baked texture I think a little more advantageous to use perhaps more approachable because since it's not a powder the pickup is a lot more conservative you won't have as much on the first lay down and that allows you the opportunity to build the color as you like the intensity dial is in your hands next I went in with Limelight the pink mauve which will be lighter in color than the previous two shades I applied on the other side, more on the apples of my cheeks because I wanted to save Paramount, the peachy coral shade, for near my nose. Now, Paramount, the peachy coral, is the lightest shade out of the palette and the one that doesn't have the most impact. So I would use, again, a stiffer brush to apply this shade, and depending on your skin tone, will determine how much of this color you decide to apply. For my skin tone, I think it works great here, again, on the center of my face. It has that brightening effect, not again the same effect as let's say Famous in Golden Age, the more fuchsia pinky shades that I would have here higher on my cheeks. But Limelight I feel is just that right amount of color 
right here on the inner side of my face just enough and it might be hard to see on camera because I have a lot of light coming through so it is pulling some color away in person however you can see a little bit of that peachy coral hue rest here on the center of my face now although I apply these colors separately just so you can see them in action solo ultimately I would combine all these shades I could strike across this way or strike across this way and place everything on my cheeks in this sweeping fashion and I feel the colors are harmonious in that way which is why I think this cheek palette is fairly popular because you don't have to be afraid of mixing and matching you won't run into muddiness or just unevenness in application the colors work well with one another yes if you wanted to keep the richer colors higher on your face that makes sense to do all in all again I would just combine these shades together and it's a great opportunity to experiment as well if you just wanted to play applying the colors separately or mixing them all together very happy with this cheek palette as well as the design is the holiday palette for NARS. I think it's fun, very much whimsical in that sense, very holiday in that vibe. Going into my second cheek product purchase, again, I decided not to get the Charlotte Tilbury face palettes, but I did want to get the mini beauty highlighter wand duo set. I've had my eyes on the fuller versions for quite some time. I never pulled the plug because I was weary of the sponge tip applicator, you know, how that will work on a daily basis type of a thing. But I thought to dive into the holiday set and I think it's great for someone who has not dived or dove, excuse me, English into Charlotte Tilbury and they want to tiptoe into the wand realm of things in her brand. I thought this was a great opportunity. So the set contains Spotlight and Pinkasm, which are, I believe, best selling shades from the beauty highlighter wand category. I applied spotlight and pinkasm on both sides of my face. I dotted spotlight three times on my cheekbones and pinkasm three times on my cheeks. One side I blended with my fingers and the other with a Sonia G brush. I will say to work fast with this consistency because I found when after blending one side and went to the other with a brush, the product started to settle a little bit and it didn't have the same fluidity as it did when I blended this side right away with my fingers. So that will be the only observation. So today I did one side at a time. I dotted here, blended right away, and then went to the other side, blended right away. Great with either brush or finger, but you do get more product left behind when blending with fingers. I don't work with makeup sponges, so I can't say what type of finish you could expect, but from fingers, great finish. With brush, it's going to take away a little bit of product. So if you don't want too much of the highlighter left behind, then you can blend out with the brush. But I have to say though, the consistency in terms of the shimmer factor not low key but not overly metallic and shiny either it's just right in providing that highlight that soft focus glow but still a little bit of shine at the same time same thing with pinkasm and i applied it on top of the nars cheek colors and my goodness my cheeks looked pink same consistency as spotlight and again i like to start blending right after i applied the product on my skin it's really nice to have a highlighting type of a product product that doesn't look or emphasize texture on your cheek skin. When I start to apply highlighter product lower on my face, I do run the risk of that region looking textured because of the nature of the product, but Pinkasm doesn't look like that at all. It actually gives me really nice reflectivity on my cheeks, especially when the light hits that area. Fantastic over powder product. It doesn't interrupt the blend of the previously applied products, and it's fantastic on its own. So if you're not one to wear powder blush anyway, you you can just rely on pinkasm to give you a little bit of color but shine at the same time really happy with these fantastic for travel and it might just lead me to buy full-size versions Next, we have Freck Beauty. Now, I think I briefly encountered this brand maybe when running through the new product release page on Sephora, but what caught my eye when scrolling through the shades of their soft blur lipstick, when I ran into main character, rose brown you know you've been on this channel for quite some time the words rose and brown together 
captivating for me. And then batty, dark brown, my goodness. The concept of a soft blur lipstick is appealing to me, especially now where I mostly reach for maybe a lip gloss or something balmy in nature, the Suku Sheer Matte Lipstick, or even their Moisture Rich Lipstick, a Lisa Eldridge Luxuriously Lucent Lipstick. I have to say the Freck Soft Blur Lipstick reminds me of the Suku Sheer Matte. I know. Very soft on the application. The lipstick bullet is small and round, so it makes it really easy to apply around the contours of your lip. But the shade Rose Brown is just my perfect everyday autumn shade, fam. I have found it. And I think you know that the matte lip look is very much inspired from the 90s era. And I feel very 90s when I have these types of lip colors on, especially now with the bangs. It's taken me back, really nostalgic. Fantastic color, incredible texture. And despite its matte texture, silky on the application, very soft on the lips. It's like a wrapping type of experience when you apply the soft blur lipstick from Freck Beauty. And the fact that you can tap your lipstick after applying it, it's like the matte finish also, I feel, adds a little bit of, of volume to the lip also. It just kind of, feeds it, you know? And the colors are, again, rose, rose brown, rose brown. If I want a little bit of contrast, I could go in with that brown lip pencil, okay? We can go there. And as I mentioned before, Batty, mm, as you know, I love these types of shades. And to have a dark brown in this soft matte blurring finish is absolutely perfect. It gives me the right amount of, I know smoke is a strange word to describe how a color looks on the lip versus how it looks on the eyes, but that's kind of the vibe Batty is giving me. Fantastic to wear on its own too. I don't necessarily have to apply shadow on or, or cheek products on, okay? I could just put on Batty and it is bad all by itself. You knew I was gonna go there. Or apply main character on top of Batty for a little bit of, you know, that gradient effect. If I wanted right now, I could take Batty, and again, due to the structure of the lip bullet, you could get a little more precise here if you wanted. Apply Batty on the outer corners of your lip, and this is definitely gonna add a little more shape to it. Ooh, this is fun to do. Construction is lightweight, easy to travel with, kind of hide it in your bag. Very happy with these two shades. I was eyeing the pink bay shade, but I thought main character will be a better match for me, and I think it most certainly is. And it's just so satisfying to apply. Like, when you do this, although it's a matte, it's smooth. It's like a bomb that's matte. Hmm. Figure that. And lastly, we have the Huda Beauty Empowered Eyeshadow Palette. I paused when I first saw this eyeshadow palette. Upon seeing it for the first time, it screamed, buy me, because having the grays in there, the grays did me in, fam. They did me in. With the peachy corals on the other side and the burgundy metallics, or however I interpreted the colors at the time on the photo, it called to me. And again, when I had the opportunity to buy it, that was one of the first items in my basket. So here we have, again, the Empowered Eyeshadow Palette, which I have used a few times already, but happy to share some B-roll with you. I first went in with Worthy, one out of the two cream textures in here, and I used my Sonigi Fusion Worker and Blender Brushes to first set up the base, and I think these shades, both in Worthy and Purpose, Purpose is the black cream shadow. If you want a little more intensity from the powder shadows in here, these textures have like a, a soft matte finish on the skin, but I wanted to use my Fusion Brushes to get that product moving on my lids, and I followed with Rebel to blend out the edges of Worthy, and happy to discover that although I was using a powder on top of a cream product, they blended well together, uh, Rebel didn't catch in an odd way, everything looked very smooth. Then went in with Visionary, and Visionary is the marbled shade in the palette. Despite how beautiful it looks in pan, it actually has more of a burnished finish in comparison to the other metallics in here. Some metallics are more high shine, others are more reflective, and again, I will film a separate video going over Empowered and the different textures found in the palette, but just to quickly mention, 
Visionary is more, again, a low-key type of a finish. Really nice also if you just wanted to rely on that color to be placed all over your lid and to lightly buff the edges. And then I went in with Winner, which was the more lavender grayish tone matte in here. One of the shades that drew my eye immediately when I saw this palette for the first time. I tapped that on the outer corner on Worthy and again that eggplant undertone of Worthy kind of amplified the grayish kind of tone from when and that's why I wanted to just tap and not necessarily swirl and twirl because the matte fused well with that cream color and then went in with bold moves on the inner corner now bold moves as I had mentioned compared to visionary so this is bold moves and this is visionary you see the difference in terms of finish which is fine I think it advantageous to have different finishes in one palette because maybe one day you want to go ultra shine reflective i mean look at bold moves that is super shiny but then you're like you know what i want to be a little more key today with visionary totally fine and the spaces on the eye that i like to have high reflective shine besides my lid are inner corner and lower inner lash line so that's why i went in with bold moves on those spaces on the other side i wanted to stick with the more peacher tones so i went in with legacy which was the more rusty red shade on outer corner and through the crease then i followed up with confident on the outer lid confident is your eggplant kind of eggplant brown matte in here and the darkest matte besides the two cream colors on the left side of the palette and because i had already applied legacy i thought just tapping confident on the outer corner would be best in terms of ensuring that color will show up well on the outer lid followed up with courage now on the lid now courage has a different finish from the other metallics it's more of a metallic base with sparkles strewn in there, right? So not as shiny as Bold Moves, but more shiny than Visionary. Visionary has more of like that cream to powder feel to it, a little more emollient in the pan. Courageous has the sparkles in that metallic base. So I went in first with my finger and then refined the edges with the brush. Do it on the inner corner now do it is one of those shiny shiny shades like bold moves but a beautifully bright shiny copper shade so i thought it would look well very nice on the inner corner and then limitless on the inner corner also for that gold sparkle effect one critique i have for this palette is that interesting that limitless and charisma are both these gold shades and i know one is more yellow gold the other is a warmer gold i love the texture because that's the type that you can sprinkle on any of these shades or can wear it solo so if you just wanted that gold shine you could apply it just like that but if you want it a little more like gold rain if you will i applied some of that on manifest it here on my eye look today and it really gave that beautiful brightening effect on the center of the lid i would have liked to see maybe another color in this same texture right not so much a metallic but more of a topper moment right because to have another color in this formula i think would have kind of widened the possibilities also to give another color an opportunity to be used as a highlighter because for my skin tone I really just well I could use bold moves as the inner corner highlight because it does have that shine for sure but just to have the gold color as your inner corner options maybe there could have been more of like a cooler lavender uh, overlay versus to have two gold so that's my only observations from using all of the shades all of the textures in the palette that yes i know one has a cooler undertone and the other warmer but i think because since both sides are distinct where you have one side primarily housing the mauve lavender grayish tones the other side the peachier coral warmer tones then yes this side might have the gold but then this side maybe might have more of a cooler lavender maybe mauve type of sprinkly shade but besides that i love the looks that i've created it's nice to have grays and mauves to provide that hair 
haze and smoke for daily looks that don't call for much, right? I feel like this is great for the day and similar sentiments that I described when using the Natasha Denona Dream Palette that those shades, they have that haze and a little bit of smoke but not too much and that's exactly what I feel about Empowered. And nice to have different textures in one palette. It allows you to experiment to see what happens if you apply the matte first versus the cream shadow first when you tap on the matte on top of the cream. And I like to experiment and this palette allows for the user to do just that. So we'll continue using Empowered and again, stay tuned for a separate video just focusing on the palette, the swatches and the different textures and of course, six looks. So that is it, four items. Well, I guess five if you count these separately. Although the gift card wasn't a huge amount, I think just enough for me to zero in on the products that interested me the most. And the message I will leave for this video is, you know, if you have to put everything in your basket now and edit later, then do that. But make sure you're picking something that you know more or less will work out for you, for your lifestyle, for your makeup style. And sure, maybe throw in something that is out of your comfort zone in terms of texture, color, what have you. But when I ordered these products, despite the fact that I was ordering them with the gift card, I zeroed in on the products that, again, held my most interest and I knew I would love, even if I had to do some adjusting here and there. Generally though, from reviews that I've read and videos and IG, whatever, social media feedback, I thought these were great picks. So expect to see these in my recommendations video coming up soon. I'll include mostly recent products that I love. I think we can expect for my usual favorites to be in the recommendations, you know, like the Benefit Goof Proof Eye Pencil that, that will always be in a recommendations video. So stay tuned for that. Let me know what you have on your wish list. I'll see you in that Rex video down in the comments as well, fam. And until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial, Huda Beauty Empowered Eyeshadow Palette video, or another brush video. Take care, and I will see you again soon.